So in this video, we're going to talk about attack being the best form of defense. And, you know, in the previous videos, we've talked a lot about defending your way out of trouble, how to, how to stop your opponent basically playing those attacking shots. I guess the differences and how the game's changed for me at a personal level over the course of the last few years, it's been about bringing more of the attacking style of play into my game. And when you're playing an attacking player, I think anyone at any level will know that it's frustrating that you sort of hit one bad shot and the ball just gets fired in. And it's so frustrating to think I missed the target by just a little bit and I'm on the defensive. And so I think one of the biggest realizations for me is that I would miss those opportunities. I would see a ball that maybe was a 50-50 opportunity to take the ball in short and I'd just pump it long again, mainly because I'm not 100% confident in my short game, maybe because it's not 100% natural to me to fire that ball in short. I'd much prefer for my opponent to hit an error than for me to hit an error trying to go for a shot. So I guess the thing for me has been trying to look for those 50-50 decisions to take the ball in short. I've played um, Egyptian players particularly over the last few years where if you hit a ball loose, it's going to go in. And so I've started to think about the mindset a little bit more of if I miss an opportunity to take the ball in, they're going to take it in. So I have to get the ball in before they do. So when I talk about attack being the best form of defence, it's almost remembering that just because you're playing an attacking player doesn't mean that you can't be attacking yourself. So if that ball is there to be taken in short, take it in short, take it on. I've got something that I've come up with my husband while we've been at tournaments, a little saying that I'm sure all the girls would laugh at called live and die on your own sword. And we talk about that a lot in my matches and he's even you know, been known to shout it out <laughs> in the middle of matches, which is... Um, obviously as you as you do in the heat of battle so I guess it's taking on those opportunities it's making sure that you know for me if I'm going to lose it's going down on my terms and making sure that I look for those opportunities as much as an attacking player would. I think just to round up it's it's also really important with all of the videos that, um, that we've gone through today and all the different ways that you can defend that attacking style of play is to really look at yourself whether that's on video whether it's to ask someone else whether it's to have um, a personal conversation with a coach or whatever it's it's how can you develop all of these things do you go into those front corners and hit your way out of trouble 99 times out of 100 do you counter attack but leave yourself stranded because it's not quite good enough or do you leave those opportunities that are there to be taken in short and you just end up pumping the ball long again and then it's about going away and working on all of those stuff. So, you know, can you get a partner to boast round and get you just lobbing? Can you just lob your way out of trouble for 15, 20 minutes in a practice session? Can you look to take those balls in short in practice matches and say, you know, my goal for this match is to take five drop shots on that I perhaps wouldn't normally and accept that you're going to hit a few errors every now and again. So I think it's about personal development. It's about working on the things that you know that you're good at but also things that you know that you can develop and particularly when relating it to the attacking style of play how can you change something what you would normally do to just get yourself out of trouble against that style of play a little bit more often